but it doesn't come at the same time. They don't even know who has come and who hasn't come and who has gone, so and who has eaten and who hasn't eaten. And you would su suggest that the event planner should station ushers mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So I'm coming. My next point really is the ushers. Sometimes they stand there. I always have this issue, like soldiers. I get this feeling that they really don't have an idea what they're supposed to be doing there. Sometimes I get the feeling they think they're there just to distribute the souvenirs. Oh, they're, they're just to get people so to So it depends yes. on what brief they've been so given. So what brief have they been given? Quite recently, I went to a wedding, and I got up to use the restroom, and I asked one of the ushers um, where the restroom was. Do you know, she asked three, four other ushers, and not one of them knew where the restroom was. So you, get, you wonder, what are you there for? There has to be a proper briefing for the ushers. And, and ideally, we all know, they're supposed to be stationed in sections. OK, what do you do when you, you're at an event and somebody comes in and then you say, the person's asking you, where do I seat? And you say, OK, hold on. Hello, usher. This is a guest. Where should he sit? And the usher says, I don't know. See, there anyway, mm -hmm. because they're supposed to have a list. And most times with weddings, especially our own Nigerian society weddings, we have the bride side and we have the groom side. All right? And then in, within those sections, they still have special groupings. So it's important for the event planner, and if there's no event planner, for the, for the people doing the, the wedding, to give the ushers a proper briefing as to how they want people to sit. Because you may get a very important guest being seated at the back. And that person will feel highly offended. And sometimes you get some important guests that really want to be recognized. So you need to let them know that they're around. So at least sometimes you get to a wedding and you don't even see the bride and the groom. You don't see even the parents. But if they are special guests, make sure you get them seated close to you so that you know that they have come and you can acknowledge that, you know, thank them for coming. Again, with ushers as well, they, they, they just have no idea there's no coordination maybe sometimes they need a bit of training especially when the wedding is overwhelming too many people not enough food they just stand there they don't even know how to react they just feel unless they tell them to go left or right they will just stand there and at a point in time they vanish you won't be able to see them at all and the idea is this um, with ushers you should be able to tell who has come to your section and who hasn't and you should I also have that ability to be hospitable have you eaten have you drank something are you okay that's the way I feel ushers should behave at wedding receptions and we're not getting enough of that and maybe maybe that should go back to those um, Event agency plan. or planners because I think the only thing they can do is to carry out what instructions they've been given I've yes. seen a, a, an usher, you know, ask the celebrant who the person is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we well, see, that's it. It's either that, and the thing is, is when you're having a wedding reception, there's something called a recce. That is, you do this a week or two weeks before the event, get all the suppliers together, the event plans, even the ushers, and say, look, this is the toilet, this is where you set up, this is the electrical plug, this is how it's get people to have a feel of how it's going to be before that day. Otherwise, it would be a catastrophe, you know. And then again, we also have at some of these our wedding receptions, photographers, non-eligible ones, the ones that are not actually the official ones. And they take you while you're eating, they take you while you're doing all sorts of things, and then literally force you to buy their pictures after. And most times, they're not even of great quality. So you need to be mindful of the kind of people that you allow coming into your reception hall because a lot of people are not finding it funny anymore. You, they take a picture of you and they literally force you to buy the picture and then they give you a catastrophic amount to pay <laughs> and it's not even bright, it's not even worthy. You know, you wonder, do I really want this picture? So sometimes you need to be mindful of the kind of characters that you allow into that reception hall. And these are the things we're seeing. What about souvenirs? My goodness. Now, with souvenirs, I understand the fact that sometimes you have bought an ashebi and they want to give you that gift because you bought the ashebi. I like when they give you the ashebi and the gift is in that bag before the wedding. Just so that is so much easier. That is settled. But sometimes you find they give you the gift on the day of the wedding. And guess what? Because you didn't wear the ashebi, you now feel a bit slighted. And, you know, I would say. If you have to give out something, you know, make sure it's going to be evenly distributed. It doesn't matter. It's not about how big it is. It's just about a memorabilia for that day, you know. But sometimes you now find they do a few. You have 
300, 500, 700 guests, and you do 200 gifts. Now, how are you going to share that? And then you now get some people either grabbing or forcing or fighting for it, or even asking for more than one. Oh, my sister hasn't got my And then you, it becomes disorganized. And then on that point, even if they have eaten well, drank well, and had a good time, just because they didn't get that souvenir, they leave feeling a bit begrudged. You know, so you have to be mindful how, how sometimes people give out napkins, just something small. But if you don't have that... If you, hmm. if you can't cater for everybody, then maybe you shouldn't even bother with it. Yeah, that's what you can give them when you're giving out their ashe if you have to give them. Give it to them there and then at home or wherever they're getting it so that you don't have to face that, you know, situation on the day. But, you know, the weddings are beautiful, but it, 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 it's sad when you have spent so much money on a wedding, and we all know that weddings are not cheap, and people go away feeling bad, and it's happening more and more. You know, they have spent money. You can see that they have spent money, <laughs> but it doesn't show. There was a wedding oh, that I, I, uh, I think I, it's a long time now, I, I attended in Abel uh, Kuta, and I, you know, people on this side ate, people on this side drank soft drink. But we'll talk more about that when we come back <laughs> on this break. This day with us in Oh my gosh. Okay, Janet is still here and I was sharing with her, you know, what <laughs> happened at that party and I was wondering what could have gone wrong where a section of uh, at the reception ate the food and then the other part drank um, you know, took the soft drinks and called division of labor. <laughs> <laughs> so what, could have, what do you think could have happened in that? You know, what happens is this. Sometimes, and it happens all the time, you would have given a waiter your order. And because he's overwhelmed, he has forgotten you. So a whole table, they would have placed their order. An hour later, they're still waiting for their food. The waiter has forgotten completely. And they're still thinking, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, and he eventually doesn't come. That's one scenario. Otherwise, maybe they have forgotten that table completely. And that also happens. You know, it's really about organization. Well, when he has to do it, an entire section of the hall, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, two sides of the hall, one side, oh, the I've other side. Inadequate well, preparation? Inadequate, yes. Oh, they, get, they, get have crashes. Put, they have put food, they've served one whole section when they should and have then served that. them simultaneously. You know, and they've discovered, oh gosh, the food is not enough. Because by the time it gets to them, oh, madam, what would you like? And you're looking at the list and say, oh, this is finished, this is finished, that's finished. And like, we're only two hours into the wedding. How is the food finished already? And it's either a case of, you know, sometimes you get a case where they make limited amount of maybe jollof rice because there's an assumption other things will be served. So amala will be there, fish and chips will be there. But don't forget, some of these foods don't come out until much later. The, the question uh, I'd like to ask is, um, which is more important, preparing souvenirs for your wedding or ensuring that there's enough food and drinks for everybody? Uh, without a doubt. Anybody who has taken out their time to grace your occasion is important. And by the way, at, at a wedding, everyone should be considered important. So the souvenirs are not important at all. The fact that they've come there, taken out their own precious time to come and grace your occasion, food and drink is most important for them. And it's important that somebody goes around to make sure that they have. Because guess what? Sometimes some people are so patient, they will stay there one or two hours, they are not happy at all, and they leave there very angry, and you will not know until much later. And you might not even know at all. Maybe you get to hear after the event, and then that's even worse. You know, some people will just go there, just be marking all the wrong things, and then they leave, and then forever they're upset with you okay. <laughs> without telling you. Uh, okay, Janet, as we yeah. wind down, so what's yeah. the last word for the wedding planner or those attending weddings? Well, the thing is this anybody who's planning a wedding, it doesn't, you can't plan a wedding in two weeks, you must plan in advance and you must dot your I's and cross your T's. Now, some people say they can't afford an event planner, but I, I would suggest that because you're the event per you're the person doing the event, you're gonna need somebody to assist you. So either it's a family member or a professional event planner and stipulate everything that you want to that event. Do not leave everything to the assumption of the wedding planner. Tell them, this is my family side, these are the important guests, I want everyone to have this. 
this is what I want to happen. And give them timings, you know. Uh, keep them abreast of what's happening. Even when the bride and groom are late coming from church, let them have, tell them, please give them out snacks, give them drinks, keep everybody happy. Quickly, <laughs> those attending and the MC. <laughs> those attending. Very quickly, those attending and the MC. Okay, and those attending, when you get to a wedding reception, just be polite enough to sit where you are asked to sit and make sure that, um, I mean, it's fair enough. Enjoy the occasion. If you are not happy about something, call an usher and let them know. For the MC, keep everybody on point. Let everybody know what is going on. Sometimes you're right. We do not know what Don't is going on. <laughs> Don't say <laughs> too you, much. Keep everybody you. in the loop. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on this morning. <laughs> thank Janet you. Janet Adesu <laughs> is our etiquette coach. Thank you once you're more. You're welcome. And so we'll go on a break and turn right back with the home stretch.